do this really awesome painting with tints and shades of a color without using black. Last week in my last video, I showed you how to create a value scale. We learned a little bit about the color wheel. I know, I sure learned something. And we did some practice exercises. If you missed that video, don't worry, I will link that below. But this is really great practice moving into this design. Also, I have linked below a free slideshow activity and handout showing you how to create a good composition in art using repetition and variation. So essentially this design is just created with circle shapes. Wow. And the circles are repeated, but they are also varied. Then we break up our boxes and we fill them in with tints and shades of a color. So this activity is awesome if you're just learning how to paint. Why is it awesome? Because you don't have to worry about creating realism. You are really practicing getting straight lines, learning how to control your paint, learning how to mix your colors to get just the right tints and just the right shades. And it's super, super relaxing. It's really just super fun to do. So let's get to it and get started painting. Nice. So to get started, we are going to begin with our composition. So for our composition, we are working with circle shapes. If you did not see the video, I have another video where I go really into detail about how to arrange the shapes on the page to create movement with repetition and variation. I also have this free handout that explains how to create a good composition in art using repetition and variation. I will link that below. And if you, if you want more, you can check out the video. So in a nutshell, you are just taking the same shape and you're repeating it and you're varying it. So once you have that, I have three shapes running off the side and each shape is a little bit different. The next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to add an X grid over the top. Now I love X grids. I love X grids because they are super easy for students to do. They just draw a line from corner to corner. This is how we do all of our gridding in my class. They, I also like working in squares because they never get the orientation of the paper wrong, like holding a hamburger or hot dog. So whenever I can, as long as the project allows, I will always choose a square over a rectangle. And I like to use the X grid because there is no measuring. So we are not using this for drawing, we're really just using it for design in this particular lesson. So I'm just going to real quick show you how I did that. I just drew a line corner to corner, down the middle. That gave me the center. And now I'm drawing a line from corner to corner. This is just going to be part of our design for this painting. Corner to corner. And that's it. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to fill in all of our circles with tints and shades of any secondary or tertiary color. So I just don't, and the reason why I do secondary and tertiary is because this lesson is intended to teach students a little color theory. And I like for them to learn by doing, not just by like me telling them. So here I am mixing up kind of a reddish orange color. I added a little bit of yellow and some red together and I'm mixing it up really well. So you can also check out, you definitely wanna practice creating tints and shades first. I will have a value scale like this one linked below, free in the description, so you can check that out. But I also have another video where I show you all the theory behind creating these tints and shades. So I'll go over it real quick as I create my tints and shades here, but practice, practice, practice. It is definitely important to do that first. Okay, okay so see how I am offloading my brush here. I'm just getting all of the, the paint out of the, the uh, ferrule of the brush, this, this part right here. Okay, so I mix up a good amount of my hue color. I actually am wondering if this is gonna be enough for my tints and my shades. You wanna make sure you mix up enough for your whole painting. Okay, so now my paint is all mixed. I'm going to begin with creating some tints and shades. So this exercise, everything inside the circles is going to be done in my warm color here. 
and then everything outside the circles is going to be done in values of another color. So this is really good exercise for teaching students or learning yourself how to control your brush, how to mix colors. So right here I am painting on, I'm just painting on watercolor paper. Sometimes with, well, I, I paint on all kinds of surfaces with my students. You can use cardboard. I gesso cardboard a lot because it is cheap and it's sturdy. And when you gesso it, it can really withstand a lot of moisture and it holds up really nice. Foam board, which is what I have underneath me right here. I also sometimes paint with students on foam board. I've also used, often I use illustration board. I sometimes use canvas with uh, my more advanced students. Sometimes I use wood panels with my advanced students. But in the beginning, I start with some of these like cheaper materials. So as far as technique here, I am using a flat brush and I am pulling usually downwards towards myself because when you pull down, you usually have a much better, steadier hand. Okay, and, and I did not gesso this watercolor paper. If you want, to, you can gesso it for a more longer lasting, it won't, the, the paint won't absorb into the paper. It forms like a barrier. But since this is just a quick exercise, I did not do it to this one. So what I'm doing is I'm really just kind of like balancing out my, my tints and my shades. So this is my hue, it is my main color. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit in each, each shape here. Um, so adding, I'm pulling, again, I'm pulling down and I'm going straight with this brush. You don't want to like, in the beginning, it's, it's hard to kind of figure it out. You can do this also on an easel or you can paint on the table. I don't have enough easels for my students in my classroom, so I usually do this on a table. Okay, so this is a really just good beginner intro to painting straightforward exercise in both composition and in uh, color theory and it also is great for skill building like how to control your your paint all right so here i have a circle this is where i might use a smaller brush i try not to have too many like super small brushes for my students and i i kind of let them only use them in like really small shapes so I control which brushes they have. If they want a smaller brush, I have them ask me. Only because then they'll, they'll really fuss. Because a lot of them really want it to look perfect and they think going slow is the answer, but that is not always the answer. Okay, so now I'm gonna start making my tints. So to make my tints, I'm gonna pull a little bit of paint over here because I wanna save that for my shades. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white, and I always test first. I don't wanna overdo it. Don't, don't, don't overdo it, yes. Make sure you are mixing your paint really, really well on your palette. You don't wanna get streaks in your in your paint. And also frequently, you'll see me do this a lot. I, I get the, the, the paint that gets kind of jammed up and stuck at the tip of the brush, or the ferrule of the brush, and I, and I use that. So you're gonna to wanna to get some like, it's fun to see a lot of contrast in your values. So I wanna put my a lot of darks next to light. So since these values are very, very similar, I'm kind of spacing them out a little bit and you can see I just spun my paper there a bit so that I could get a better, better reach. Okay, so I put that value there, maybe put this one over here. Like over there or over there. All right, so I'm gonna speed this up, but all I'm doing here is I am painting inside these circles and I am creating more tints the same way I just showed you. So now we are going to create our shades. So when I teach how to create tints and shades, I never let the kids use the same palette. We have two separate plates because if they start mixing their white with their shadows, they end up getting mud. To darken my hue, 
I'm not going to add black. When you add black to your colors, they can get really, really muddy. So this is yellow mixed with black. This is yellow mixed with its complement. So the complement of yellow is violet. So I added a little bit of violet to get those shades. So now we're working with like a red orange. So the opposite of like a red orange is a blue green. So I have a tiny bit of blue here and yellow. I am going to take some of my yellow and mix it with my blue. We've just finished the mixing. <laughs> to get kind of a nice dark blue green color here. Now, I don't, tint or shades can get dark really, really fast. So I am not going to use this brush here because I just got all of that paint on it. So I am going to either wash my brush, but in this case, we're trying to move a little quickly, or I'm gonna grab a new brush. So I'm going to grab another brush and just the same way we did with our tints, we don't wanna overdo it. So I'm just taking a small amount of that green and I'm going to mix it here with my red orange. Oh yeah, look at that, that's a great, great shade. And see how my paint was gooping up? I'm just using my brush and I'm pulling it down towards the middle. Okay, now instead of trying to like bite this round corner, I might just spin, I'm pulling towards me, spin my paper a bit. Okay, so now to get this edge, I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. I am making like a straight line, and then I am pulling the paint to kind of the middle. Smoothing it out. So it's a really nice, rich shade. So I am right here. And I'm gonna do two more shades. Now we have our circle shapes finished. Now we're gonna go ahead and paint the background. I am using the same blue green that I used to create the shades in my circles. That is what helps to create unity in your paintings. I really love this lesson because it is an opportunity that she greatly appreciates the opportunity to teach a lot of skills and theory kind of all in one without having to worry so much about realism. So this is a real, like the kids aren't as hard on themselves because it's really just kind of a cool design if their work doesn't look realistic. So they're really learning a lot about color theory, how to harmonize a painting by using a limited palette so we are using just one two three colors and white here to create all of these different tints and tones hey that's pretty good